Previously on 30 in 30. We walked around the Miami Dolphin Stadium on the outside, had an amazing fan event, and we're officially two thirds of the way through our journey. It was time to leave Florida and head to New Orleans. There you go. Now, look at that. NASCAR socks, we got them from a fan. You ready to zoom? I wanna zoom fast. They're gonna go so fast. Hey. 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 You want me to buy you a beignet when we get to New Orleans? Yeah. Okay. Then let's go, we have to leave. Stop dropping things. Good God, Johnny! We made it to the airport, excited to go somewhere neither of us have been before. And it was on the plane that it happened. We hit $250,000 for St. Jude. A quarter of a million dollars. We did that. It was a moment that hit me like a ton of bricks. And as we were sitting on the runway, the plane had to reroute to avoid a storm, so it was delayed. And when we were ready to go, the steering failed. The pilot got on and said we were about to head back to the gate. And me, I felt zero stress. We had just raised all this money. We'd been traveling for 21 straight days. And regardless of what happened, we were going to get to New Orleans. I even tweeted about it. I had no doubt that we were gonna make this happen. And then, not even a minute later. I don't know if I take good news, we got everything solved. We should be taxiing shortly and on our way. Thanks for your understanding. The problem had been fixed and we were off to New Orleans. Johnny and I stepped out of the airport and that's when something else hit me like a ton of bricks. The humidity. The heat index got up to 113 that day. Otherwise known as not Tom friendly weather. And since we had raised $250,000, we had to do something else in New Orleans. We had to stay at a haunted hotel. The one we settled on, the Hotel Monteleone. Built in the late 1800s and on plenty of haunted hotel lists, this was the hotel we were gonna stay at. We couldn't check in yet, so we checked our bags and walked to the Superdome, or if you ask Hulk Hogan, the Silver Dome, the home of the New Orleans Saints. Now, unfortunately, construction prevented us from getting into the stadium, though we were recognized by the construction workers while walking around, so that was pretty awesome. We asked if we could peek our head in, which we could not, understandably. Security also stopped by to make sure we weren't causing a ruckus, but they were super cool. The Superdome was a stadium that I really wanted to visit because it was so much more than just where the Saints played football. And no, I'm not talking about holding concerts or other events. This stadium was the place of refuge during Hurricane Katrina. This stadium meant so much to the city and it was a sobering moment just to be there. And of course, it was the site of so many historical moments following Katrina. The blocked punt, sorry again, Falcons, and other moments that will forever be remembered, not just in Saints history, but in NFL history. It was then time to do a little exploring. The French Quarter. Right here in the middle of my soul. Oh, why you gotta be so cold? We of course had to stop by the Café du Monde to get Johnny a beignet. He approved. We then stopped over by Bourbon Street to take in some of the sights, and then it was time for the fan event at Curio. But not before I got myself a vegan po' boy, and of course, some gumbo. I got it. We hit $250,000 today. So for today only, I'm a winner. But do you know what winners get in New Orleans, Johnny? Gumbo. I've never had gumbo before. And yes, it's grass people gumbo, but let's see what the fuss is about. Oh my god, it's so hot. Hold on. Oh my god. <coughs> gumbo is for winners. The fan event was fantastic. Saints fans packed it out and were kind enough to give me a baseball jersey signed by everyone in attendance. It's just another memento that I'll keep for the rest of my life. Also got to speak to Saints fans about their connection with the team and what they meant to the city. So before Katrina, they were like, you know, the Aints and everything. I used to like follow LSU more than any like professional football or anything like that. 
But um, yeah, like it was as soon as we kind of got that uh, that breeze, like Peyton, like legacy going, it was like on top of everything. And then to just have that much like excitement after Katrina. The resiliency, I mean, we got the rebirth statue outside the Superdome commemorating that. And it's, it's overall, it is kind of a microcosm of how the city can band together in times of tragedy, in times of so much adversity. We're, we're very strong. The people of New Orleans are very, very strong. I was actually sitting at a bar room in Wisconsin, just north of Milwaukee. Oh, wow. And I was wearing my, at the time, Deuce McCann's jersey and the whole bar was celebrating with us uh, because it was just that impactful and emotional. I, I would love to be here for a game. I haven't been able to experience one, but it, it's just, even even for college games, it's it's always awesome to, environment to be around, so. It's I one think. love, one game, mm -hmm. and everyone and I, finally comes and puts themselves together and forgets about everything else in the world and just joins in for that camaraderie and the love of a game. After the fan event, as promised, I streamed for an hour, and in that hour, we raised another $5,000 for St. Jude. Y'all crazy. And then, after a 20-minute nap, and Johnny finished the video, it was time for the ghost hunt. We went down to the front desk and asked where the most haunted part of the hotel was. She said the 14th floor, and we were shown this picture of Maurice, the resident ghost. She showed us on her phone, and at first I thought she was just referring to some white specks, and it wasn't until after that I saw, well, you know, that. And so we headed to the 14th floor, and here's what happened. Hey, ghosty, ghosty, ghosty. His name is Maurice. Show some respect. It's also, is that the picture? All right, we're gonna save over there for last. We're gonna, we're gonna go this way first. Fourteen floor. No, we're gonna go that way, just not yet. Raggy, I want a little ruby snack. <laughs> row, row, row. row. Well, I'm getting bad vibes, man. Like it's like weird. It's the air conditioning. They say it's just the air conditioning. It's creepy. No. This is like, I have goosebumps, man. Like, legit.
Is it less foggy now? I don't know, man. I think it's less foggy. I don't know, man. Dude, it is not foggy anymore. Okay. Did we scare him away? Maurice, we're, we're just hanging out. Friends, cool. are we coming? It smells weird. It does smell weird. This seems like a newer part of the hotel, though. Like, it like it looks different over here. Like, these look like they look like the doors look different. Maybe it's just foggy because it's like a renovation. <laughs> Same lights. Do the same light bulbs. Push the button. Push the button. Let's go. It's the top floor. Now we gotta wait for this elevator. Even the freaking elevator seems haunted, man. Alright, let's go down and get that picture. I mean, I found him hanging out of the spa. Second floor. Oh my god! It's just an old elevator. That's it, buddy. It's just an old elevator. It's just an old elevator. <laughs> It's okay, we're good now. We're being able to chill, man. That was not.
close and slow, we do. I guess they call it slow as it opens. Yeah, yeah, that's valid. That's a valid point. That's valid. Okay. Like, this is scary. It's a landline. I thought this tech was gone. And so after a night of sleeping with all of the lights on, I can say that New Orleans was one, if not the most, unique place that we have been on this trip. And truthfully, I cannot wait to come back. A reminder that there are two ways to donate to St. Jude, either on every video through the donate button on YouTube or in the link in the description. Both go to the same place. I appreciate you all.